I'll watch for them. Just that we'll ha probably have to put anything he has says in under, um, oh, an executive session? Public comment. Public comment, okay. Well, it's 7.01, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, Dave, do you want to go through the list again? Uh, who's here? Sure. Uh, we have um, select board members, Flo Smith, Justin Lawrence, John Quinn, uh, Dave Delcor from the Times Argus, Bill Gentilly, who was on your appointment list, Bill Wolf, the police chief, Diane Isabel, town treasurer. And, and, and now we have James Caltrera, who is another one of your appointments. Okay. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, yes, I had a, I wanted to add a conversation about reopening the building, uh, what our plans are for that. And also, we'll probably have a executive session under um, personnel. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Hearing none, uh, Treasurer's report, Diane? Okay. I have received um, the fourth quarter bill from the school. And this is always the adjustment bill because it's the last bill of the quarter. And I've got good news with it. Uh, for the first three quarters, I have paid $1,675,874.29 for school payments. The last quarter is going to be $1,612,244.45, which is a savings of $63,633.84. So that is good news for us. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, the tax money has been coming in, uh, and I've had a lot of people, I've been really looking at the checks, and a lot of people who normally come in have been mailing the checks. So, so far, so good. The money is starting to come in. Okay. Uh, anything else? No. Anything else is on the agenda. Okay. Thank you very much, Diane. Mm -hmm. James Colterra. Uh, private road name, Herring Farm Drive. Yes. How's it going? It's a going. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> this is pretty new to everybody, huh? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, just where is the road you want to name Herring Farm Drive? It's uh, uh, Route 12 South, headed south. Uh, it's almost across from the, the uh, Fresh Tracks Winery. It used to be where Michael Herring had his farm stand. And what are you doing in there? I see you plowed the field, or somebody has. No, we actually sold the field. Yeah, you know, we actually sold that to Matt Morris and and uh, and uh, Muriel Morris, and now he's he's plowing the field. But we, we're on the knoll, so we're going to be putting four houses on that knoll. Okay, so this is a a, a drive for a, a development then. Yep, yep. There's already an entrance that was already you know pre-existing, you know, for the Herring farm. Uh, and his farm stand, and so we're going to be coming in off that. It's been state approved and everything, and uh, and then it's going to it's going to turn left, and it's going to head north, about 330 feet, and then there'll be three driveways off of that one driveway. Okay. Um, any comment on this? Brad, uh, Tom has checked with um, the state as far as uh, the suitability of the name. They have no issues with it and at 911. Now, Dana, is there, um, is there any requirements as far as the quality of the road goes as, uh, for this? Uh, not so much the name, but just for the road. Well, this will be a private road. And so at this juncture in time, there is not. Um, the um, 
they're using an existing axis on Route 12. Am I right, James? So it's um, yes, yeah. correct. Yep, and and we are going to be upgrading the access to meet state highway approval. Uh, right, because that's and, that's what we had to do. So. And the state's been involved with that. Yes, they have. Yep. Uh, the the private road itself, lunch off the Route 12, is that going? Have you talked to the fire department and all those other people that uh, would have some input as far as the width and the? Uh... Yeah, we went to the state of Vermont about that. You know, the state highway highway transportation. They came out, met with us. They issued us the permit, along with our. You know, that actually uh, uh, comes in with our actual subdivision. So they're you know fully aware. And we're fully aware of what we have to do. Is, uh, have you talked with the Berlin Fire Department? Well, when we had to send out the actual subdivision stuff, we had to mail something to the fire department, to the police department, and everybody, letting them know what was going on. Okay, then. Uh, do I hear a motion on this? A motion to approve the... The private road name. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Dana, is uh, uh, flow on? Flow is on, yes. She's muted, however. Mm -hmm. Hello? What? <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> okay, well, I guess, uh, I guess uh, James, you've got your name. Thank you very much. And Mr. Herring appreciates it, too. <laughs> okay, have a good day. Thank you. You have a great evening. Thanks for all of your time. Thank you, James. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay, next up is Phil Gentilly on the foot range on Irish Hill. And Phil is on with us. Um, I spoke to you last time about the foot bridge in Irish Hill. Um, I also, there was a suggestion regarding the snowmobile club. I have right. spoken with Dave Rulo from the Barry Thunder Chickens, Barry Town Chicken. Thunder Chickens. Yeah. And he uh, indicated that they'd be willing to help in any way that they could. They do not have a connection to Irish Hill um, at the moment. Right. So, Phil, right. go ahead. Yeah. I'll can, can you hear me? All right. Yes. Okay, good. Well, thanks for taking the time. Uh, I guess I guess where we're at with this is Tom Willard and I went up uh, to check the Darling Hill footbridge there. And it's more than just a footbridge. It's a horse bridge, it's a bike bridge. It's a technically, uh, I guess, an ATV bridge. Uh, and I don't know, Dana, did you get the picture sent out to John and Justin and Brad and Flo and all? Did they see the pictures of the bridge? I may not have, so um, no. Okay, um, all right. Well, uh, the condition of the bridge is uh, poor at best. Uh, I'll send pictures out to all of you uh, after the meeting. I do have pics and I sent them to Dana, but I'd like you to take a look at them. Seriously, there's a huge safety issue involved right now with that bridge. Uh, I don't have the dates on when that bridge was built. Uh, you know, it's got concrete abutments, it's got nice steel uh, girders across, but the, all the wood at this point is is fairly rotted. There's a couple places that's broken through. Uh, Tom and I went up with Bill Clark, who we all know Bill. He's a local guy that does a lot of contracting and he knows quite a bit about these things. He thought that it was unsafe. So hence, uh, I talked to Dan and we posted a sign on it. I don't know what our the town's liability is on this bridge, but it is worrisome that the bridge is unsafe at this point and it's uh, used at your own risk at this point. Uh, so that's that's where we're at presently. Uh, my feeling is that with the uh, COVID-19 activity uh, and use of not only the loop around Berlin Pond, but public lands in general and town lands, 
that we should probably look at repairing that bridge as soon as possible. Now, it's, it would be wonderful to have partnerships in this. Uh, my hesitancy on the partnerships would be uh, a delay in getting this attended to as soon as possible. There is a lot of usage, you know, with people doing stay at home and trying to figure out new activity. I mean, I counted yesterday, John, you live on the pond too. I don't know if you're outdoors yesterday. I counted over a hundred people and Justin, you're on the pond. Uh, you know, there were well over a hundred people walking around the yeah. five mile loop. When I, I don't when, know how many people, what's that, John? When I drove to the store, I counted, there were 11 cars at the bottom of the Irish Hill gate and 23 in, down along the road and parking lot. So we easily right. had hundred people yesterday. Yeah, a lot of people. And uh, I do worry about that bridge and I would love to get a partnership going. And I think either Justin or, or, or uh, Dana, you mentioned that the Thunder Chickens, we, we as a Berlin Conservation Commission have not come to an agreement or a decision on whether you know, a snowmobile trail up and over uh, would be appropriate. I mean, we're open to it, but we haven't made a decision as a commission on whether that would work or not. I know that the sense was, wouldn't it be wonderful for to have a trail like that in the wintertime to go up Darling Hill and cross the ridge and connect with Northfield. Uh, that would be, I'm sure the Thunder Chickens and many other people that use vast trails would love to see that. Uh, you know, and it would take quite a bit of work and coordination. Uh, so as far as reaching out to other people, I think it's something we can do. In the meantime, I think we've got a, an immediate safety issue. And I don't know, Dane, if you talk to, uh, Rob or anyone about liabilities, but we should probably take that under consideration, given that we're providing a bridge and it's unsafe as a town. So, so uh, Bill, if you don't mind, just yeah. real quick, I wanted to kind of interject. Um, and I wanted to ask what you knew. Um, it was my understanding years ago when that, uh, when the town purchased that parcel of property, the Darling Road is open to, isn't it already open to ATVs and yeah. snow trucks? as yep. long as the connectors are there and there's the other piece as well right right um so that i don't think really would require much of a part i mean it, it's already there that i mean the other right. trails or whatever it's good to have isolated trails for walking and isolated trails for right uh, maybe no, I, I agree okay. i agree yeah uh, I know that I've I've actually been up there on ATVs with the snowmobile clubs, and they have the manpower and an un, like a huge like all right. the resources where they would they we'd be able to make things happen much quicker. Um, mm -hmm. I understand the immediate piece for right. sure because it is a safety issue, um, but I just wanted to make sure that I mean I, I, they yeah. don't, the only problem is just the, whether or not we can connect, which is an issue that is outside of that piece. Right, right. We were approached probably 18 months ago, maybe longer, or maybe shorter, and we haven't uh, we haven't connected again. And I'll have to go back and look at the two gentlemen's names that came from the vast and the thunder. That was one one of the people Dana referenced, the blue light, right. and. We were open to that and we it never went any further. I know that they got the the select board's approval to go under the interstate and come up to your land and do all that. And I think yeah. I think linking it all together makes a lot of sense and would be I think a partnership is great. I think the the board is presently composed of the membership. We've had a discussions, and to be honest with you, the discussion wasn't so much about vast trails. Uh, because we feel as though vast trails in some respects are well used and it's during snow season. So you don't have the erosion and mud issues. We think that when wildlife comes, we've been told, and I think you know Tom Willard's been part of this discussion, that vast trails actually wildlife understand what they are and, and uh, coexist with them in, 
in ways that we didn't think about before, as opposed to the other issue we have up on that hill is mountain bikers. And we felt like we'd have to go slow with the mountain bikers because they've actually had some uh, renegade trails cut in there. And I'm, I'm using Tom Wilder as a resource, not only for archives historically what's gone on in Berlin, but he's an avid hunter, yep. whether it's turkey, deer, whatever. And Tom Willard's are the belief that mountain bike trails, the way they switch back and go back and forth, create more wildlife habitat interruption than vast trails do. Uh, deer and large animals and those, they, they, vast trails are like super highways and they know how to navigate them and stay away or do whatever. Whereas these trails that just switch back and forth, uh, they, you know, they interrupt porcupine, turkey, Fox, you know, you go on with all the small wildlife, and uh, you know, we think that that's probably more of a problem than a vast trail. We just haven't connected with those folks at Vast, and we're not. And I think I'd like to see a connection. Whether it goes, I'm not sure what the landowner thinks on the other side of Darling, but the other thought was to go across the ridge line, connect, right. and then go down Shaw Outdoor Center, and end up in Northfield. Yep. Out by, you know, out by Norwich it, University. Yeah, which is, you know, I think as a conservation commission, I think most of us believe we want to get people outside. We want people to use our public lands. We want people to understand and be in nature. And I think with the Corvid activity, I think we're going to find more and more people discovering that, you know, Berlin's a little bit of a gem with these lands we have. And I think we should, you know, uh, aver not advertise it, but promote it in such a way that there's good stewardship of the land. And I'm not opposed to vast at all uh, myself. I don't know if every board member feels this way, but we've, we've talked about it and we've, we've had a sense that that could work well. So I think we're getting a little off topic here, but yeah, I think there should be a partnership and we can explore that. Now, the, the immediate need is that bridge needs to be addressed as soon as possible. Now, obviously we went, Tom Willard and I went ahead and at no cost to the town, we had Bill Clark look at it We've got the estimate. I don't know if you all saw that with the, the estimate on the materials and the labor to replace that bridge. And I think, Dana, did it come in about five grand for something? Do you know, Dana? It, it was around $5,000, I remember, from the yeah. last meeting. I think Dana, uh, is Dana muted right now? I think he is. Uh, he looks, he almost looks frozen. Oh, no, he blanked. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it seems like John, Justin, and I are the only ones. Oh, Brad, there he is. Brad's moving. Uh, so um, I think I think we've got. So here, you know, approach uh, mind me. You know, my question was. Oh, sorry. Okay, I think that I think the issue that the select board raised at the last issue was given the immediate needs, the financial constraints on both town coffers and just where things are at in general, that we have uh, some concern about where are we going to find the $5,000 and should we be spending it on bridge repair? And I guess my response to that would be, uh, we do have conservation funds in an account. And this would be something that uh, we think as a conservation commission would be aptly spent to address a safety issue and getting people outdoors and using the trails. Now, it doesn't preclude the fact that if we were to spend the money, we couldn't, uh, you know, ask these other users of the trail, whether it's Vast or whoever else, to help, uh, you know, to help fund it uh, and be part of the project. Uh, so that's maybe an approach. But I do, I do think that there's an immediate need and I don't know how we go about. I, I would hate to see us get into a partnership and a year from now still be talking about how we're going to repair the bridge. When I agree. I was just curious if, I mean, I didn't see any specs on the bridge or anything like that. So one of my things was if this were to develop down the road, I'd hate to see where we'd have to maybe put more money into a bridge again or do a completely different bridge. What it was it built wide enough with the idea in mind that you may be able to use side by sides or snowmobiles to, to go over the bridge? I don't, I don't think, I don't know how wide a groomer is. A machine could get across it as built. I don't know what you trail behind to do. Uh, to do I mean, how wide? Like it would, you would probably. I think you'd need probably a six or an eight foot wide bridge minimum. Oh, you would. Okay. And I know, well, I know that sometimes Bellavance. I don't know if you've ever talked to them or anything, and it may actually save money with the bridge. 
their old truck beds that are all steel frame, huge they, stands. They could they'll, lay that down. They'll lay those right down and then you'll deck them. Yeah, well, that's a good, that's a good point. I mean, if, if we could find partnerships like that and make a few phone calls, I'm all for it. I mean, we've already got the, we've already got the structure there. Although I did notice that, you know, when that stream is raging and I, I guess maybe last winter it did, it did erode a little bit of the uh, concrete abutment on the uh, east side where the stream comes and hits it. Uh, but I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly, I'm so, I don't think the, the commission would be opposed at all to looking at it a different way than having a, uh, a local contractor build out and use the girders that are there and make it wooden. But anything, as far as wit, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's an issue with that either, other than the, the way it was built and the abutments that are there fit the rails that were placed. And whether you could expand over it, I'm not sure. I think right now we're looking at a about a 60, 60 to 72 inch width on it. With that wouldn't be enough for what you're talking about. That would only that would only be a trail behind. Uh, but I mean, it accommodates machines and accommodates ATVs right now and horses and bikers and you know. Uh, so I mean, we could look at that. Uh, and I'm certainly not a, not opposed to any of that. Any partnership we can get, great. I do think that the money we have in the conservation fund would be, uh, however we decide to go about this, I think it would be prudent for the board to go ahead and you know allow the conservation commission to put some money out of our account towards this bridge. We really feel like this is something that you know we believe in is important to get people you know, up on the, on the, on the town lands and public lands, we've protected up there and have, have usage of that. Uh, um, so, so from my perspective, I'm fine with using the conservation funds for that, but I think Justin brings up a uh, good idea with the snow machine club. And I'd love to see an expansion of that just to, as you said, Phil, to get more people out on the trails. Right. Um, we've certainly been enjoying them since we've been in the area and, uh, if we could, you know, take a day or two to coordinate and see if we can uh, get some answers from Vast, or you know, just try to, you know, explain what we're doing to see what the what the options are. Uh, I'm right. comfortable with going ahead and voting on, um, you know, using conservation money, but also at the same time, in parallel, talking with the Vast people to see if there's something that we can coordinate on in in the in the short term as well. Yeah, I'm not sure what where vast is, where they are thinking the trail goes from. Justin, where are they thinking of coming from you up to Darling Entrance, Darling Hill Entrance? So that, How are they that navigating the that? issue uh, prior? I think what the, the piece that we're missing would be some, getting from actually Josh Walker's land on Black Road, right down that section of road. Um, I think that, I mean, especially as, as I think that we've, we've had some good experience with the vast trail in Berlin Corners recently. I mean, I don't think it's nearly as impactful as people thought. Right. Um, and so if we can get through that section, then it can, it can tie the trailhead and that together. And that's what will I mean, there'll be, I think we may see a huge uptick, obviously, in snowmobile traffic if we do that. Um, right. I, I I can see where it would be best, you know, it's gonna be have to be a board board decision, I would I would assume. So I don't know what that would do for a delay. Um like I'm I'm completely out with John on the fact that I think you guys should be able to spend that money to build a footbridge. Um I don't know that we're gonna be able to immediately talk with the vast people and say, yeah, that we're there in because one of the re there would be money for that. So if if we had, um, if the whole trail system was already in place, yeah. Vast would actually pay for that potentially. Right. Uh, but because it's not there, what we can utilize is some of the non-financial resources that these clubs use. Yeah. But they're not going to want to do a lot without somewhat of a commitment of knowing they're going to be able to use that. Obviously. So there are they are they working with like Paul Fowl and landowners or whoever owns that light piece now to get to? They're they're really trying to figure out a way. And ultimately, uh, at the end of the day, 
it's no different than the snowmobiles. If the if the select board were to revisit that and decide that it made sense to to be able to connect that for the barrel and corners, we could potentially hold a hearing or whatever it may be to try and connect that right off Black Road without getting any additional landowner permission. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's something that, you know, uh, the Conservation Commission is open to discussions, but I don't, I'm not sure myself or anyone else has the time or inclination to initiate. Right. Uh, and figuring that, figuring that piece out. I think what we'd like to do is I mean, at this point, because we have a lot of new members and everything, and we haven't met because of the, you know, we've canceled our meetings to this point. I have a couple members that only meet in person, you know, some aren't able to get on and figure out how to Zoom and things like that. So we're kind of in limbo, but I think because of the makeup of the commission, we are open to having people come present to us, but I don't know there's a lot of energy to initiate research and kind of development. That's, that's that's fine. I all I'm saying is I don't mind getting some people that can get in contact with you or touch yeah. a base and and I and, know and the yeah. fact that all I was thinking was if you're going to build a bridge, I yeah. I personally would like to see it built so that maybe potential future uses. Other than that, I think you should be able to yeah. spend that money, and I think it's a good idea to replace yeah. a structure that's non potentially yeah. dangerous. Right. I just think that we should keep in mind that I believe. I wouldn't be shocked if that keeps coming around for the next couple of years with the town and, and, and I yep. think it'll, it'll have growing support. Yeah. And I, I think and I, I'll reach, I'll call Bella Vance. I don't yeah. care. I know. Yeah. I know why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Because I think a wider bridge makes sense in the long run because of usage. And I think we're all going to see a change in activity and usage with, with the current activity in general, what's going on in the mindset and the re, you know, the, uh, you know, reworking our social networks and how we're going to deal with all this. I, I just think that the, you know, I think people are going to find the outdoor is a valuable asset now that they, a lot of people didn't know was there. I think we're going to see more people using these things, public lands. And I think we're all about getting people outdoors. So it makes sense to have, you know, to build for the future in the sense that there could be other activity, whether it's horseback riding or, or vast or just, more, more activity in general. I mean, I, I you know, I've, I've been around, I go to a lot of parks and I know that that bridge that's there is, 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 you know, it's, it's not a very adequate bridge for uh, traffic in a way. Obviously it's not used very often, but when it's used on, on, on days like we've had like yesterday, uh, as John said, how, I don't know how many, he said 11 cars were parked on the road and in that little parking lot there. I didn't even bother. I mean, my wife wouldn't even walk around the pond yesterday because she said, I don't walk on weekends. There's too many, there's hundreds of people. I don't want to get close to them. So anyway, uh, I think uh, that's a lot of good suggestions, Justin. And I think we ought to look at that. I think I hear from both you and John and I haven't heard from Brad, but it sounds like you're not, uh, you're not at all opposed to uh, going forward and using some conservation funds. Let's just figure out a the safest way to get a, uh, a crossing of that brook is, you know, hopefully in a timely manner this summer and maybe Bellavance and other people will come forward and we can have a, a unified effort here. I mean, so, so do we need to, are you looking for a motion on this, Dana or Brad? Or? Uh, sure, you know, get a motion, we can still have a discussion. Say yeah. that again. Make a motion, we get a second, we still have a discussion. All right, I move to, uh, what was it up? I move to approve the uh, footbridge on Irish Hill up to $5,000, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. I, Dana I, has it in front of him. I don't have it in front of yeah, me. Yeah, it's 4,600, yeah. Your second? I'll, I'll second, second that. that. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, one of the, uh, Phil, um, how is the uh, how is the bridge constructed? Is it just two stringers with boards across? It's uh, it's two uh, poured concrete abutments with two. It looks like uh, steel rails, like railroad ties, going the length of probably fourteen feet to cross from concrete to concrete, and then it's wooden. Uh, it's a bolted on wooden decking on top of the uh, rails, and it has. Uh, probably a four foot uh, uh, handrail 
on it. Uh, so that's where it is right now. I'll send you some pictures. I think that would that would clarify the bridge for all of you that haven't been up there or seen it recently. I can send you the pictures I took two weeks ago. Uh, when, well, when you see the picture, uh, the, um, I'm trying to think how I'm trying to picture the bridge in my mind. So basically, it's just two two roads type rails across the stringers, and then you have a, a deck going the other way across the stringers. Correct. The decking, okay. the decking that's on there was three inch, six inch planks, three inches. It wasn't pressure treated. And a lot of them are that soft type of wood that could break any minute. You know, it looks strong, but it, it, it's given in a couple spots. It's rotted right through. Well, um, I would say, from my point of view, it would be to take and uh, at least talk with the, the Snowbill Club and the ATV people. Uh, I think Adam Lane was president at one time. He's manager down at uh, Tractor Supply. Okay. And, um, they would go up there sometime this week or this weekend and uh, maybe uh, talk with them briefly about it. And uh, if they aren't uh, able to uh, get right to it, so to say, I probably ought to just take and reject it. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Justin? Do you think we could get have a meeting maybe on Saturday of those interested or over the weekend and I'll walk up and take a look and talk about it a little bit? Well, I, I'll tell you, Josh Walker has been a huge factor in putting me in front of a bunch of people and talking about that. He's a pretty active ATV and snowmobile, uh, you know, right. rider. And, and, and he's the one that has all those connections. So I can touch with him. I don't have a problem with it, but I think, okay. you know, the free labor is probably the biggest thing. If that's, okay. that's, a, that's a huge piece of it, you know, there is. Um, so, and it would be well, really great if we could all get, I, I can, I can, yeah, I, get well, your email, I can get, I'll reach out to you and okay. I will, will absolutely, uh, I'll try to coordinate that as early as this evening. Okay. That'd be great. Cause I think the more, the more eyes we get on it, the better off we'll be on a bigger picture. And, uh, you know, if we could coordinate something for when it, people can get there on it. I mean, this weekend, Roger Hill says we're going to have measurable, plowable snow Friday night and Saturday. So it's a good weekend. We don't have to garden because there'll be too much snow on the garden. So we could walk up there and take a look at it and decide, you know, if Josh could come, you could come, I could come, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think I could get some, probably some of the, the Barrytown officers to come too. Yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. Let's all take a look at it. And as I said, the more, the more thoughts and ideas, but knowing that you guys have... Uh, approve some funds toward it from the uh from our uh conservation fund that's that's good to know and then we'll take it from there and as as brad said if it if it can't happen sooner and there's a danger then we should address it and get it done and then hopefully uh you know it'll accommodate what what future needs there'd be at the bridge you know maybe we can do it all at once all right well thanks for your time appreciate it Thank you. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, Phil. You're welcome, Brad. Thank you. So I don't know, if, Dana, I don't know if you saw this, but Flo sent a message on the side. Dana, do you have me muted? I can see when I unmute, my volume is up. Yeah, I, I did, and she is not muted, but she's showing on my screen is muted. Same here. I just um, sent that back to her, so, so I want to make sure. But I, I did mention, Flo, are you hearing us, or can you speak? No, I don't hear, hear anything, but I'm not showing her muted now. She's unmuted now. Yeah but I'm not hearing her. No, me either. Okay. Um, but as far as, as far as my uh, keen technical ability, I think she's unmuted. <laughs> I think you've done everything you can, Dana. <laughs> okay, um, let's see here. The budget adjustment, adjustment suggestions? That was, um, we've had that discussion 
at the last meeting and you asked me to uh, speak with department heads on items that can be um, either eliminated or postponed in light of the um, financial situation caused by COVID. Um, this is a list of items that I've discussed with department heads, um, Bill, Tim Davis, Diane, and myself came up with these. And so it's a list of suggestions for your review. And this list um, gives about a 10% reduction if you utilize each of those. Um, so what are we talking about here for total savings? Um, well, 10% of the budget, budget's 3235181 um, so actually it'd be 325,000, et cetera, yeah. Diane, how much is that on the tax rate? Are you talking to me? I can't hear you. How much is that on the tax rate, you say? Well, 50,000 is one well, penny. How much is the 300? How much would the 300,000 uh, on the tax rate, how much would it save us? So I would have to say that would be six cents. Fifty and, and, and remembering cents. that this is only we only control twenty four percent of the tax rate. Right, just the municipal portion. Mm -hmm. I've also. Yeah. Whoops, sorry. Go ahead. Would you go over the uh, where the savings would be? I'm sorry, Brad. Say that again, uh, please. Go over where the savings would be. Um, it would be, um, let me just read these down. Under the police department, we have an open um, position. Uh, that's an $80,000 a year cost. If we were to uh, delay filling that position for a period of six months, that would be $40,000. Um, if we delayed filling the highway superintendent, until November 1st, that would be 29,000. Other items in the highway department is chloride, reducing it by 8,000. Culvert materials by five. Tim says we're in pretty good shape with the culvert. Once you like put off cars so long, it's like, um, but can you hear me? You just don't need them. Or you don't need to fill that position because you don't want to hire somebody. That's the thing. So most of your major savings is coming from labor. And um, you that is most of it, with the exception of the highway, uh, the police department cruiser, delaying purchasing that for a year, and also reducing the highway equipment and structures, um, cutting that in half from 250000 to 125000 Well, how does so that go I'm going to leave us with Richardson Road and uh, uh, Richardson Road is is the project. Um, if we had 125, I am applying for a grant for that. Um, according, I have spoken with the engineer, and we probably could get another year out of it. I don't feel right about leaving in a year, but if we have to, um, we just may have to. I uh, mean, to me, Richardson Road, um, that is no different than the, the footbridge on uh, Darling Hill. It's a public safety issue. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think we should be putting that off too much more. I mean, it's been on the front, front of, the, uh, of the stove here for quite a while, and it should be cooked by now. So yeah. I just didn't understand when I looked at that one in particular. I mean, that's a 50% that's a reduction. Yeah, and he said, you know, possible negotiation for lower cost culvert replacement on Richardson Road. What else? The is entire out? original budget was not entirely Richardson Road. Right, there the was two hundred fifty highway equipment was not in entire. there. Yeah. So, how much of that was highway equipment, and how much of that was 
say Richardson Road and other structures? The original the highway two equipment in there was seventy five thousand. And what do you think the possible, how likely, like how would it be that we'd be able to negotiate that to a lower cost culvert? Um, or is that just optimism? I, I'm, I don't know, you know, that's all. I'm hoping it's not like Mirror Lake Road, which was very expensive and you could float the Queen Mary through it. Um, <laughs> but again, I mean, it depends on, you know, the, the permitting and the state requirement there. I mean, that's a major stream. Um, so is there some likelihood? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Well, Dana, if we take in, uh, if we take in stuff on the Richardson Road project, um, how is that going to affect the state share of the project anyway? At the moment, it doesn't because we don't have a commitment from the state on that. That is, I've applied for, this will be the second year, or maybe it's the third, uh, that I've applied for a grant for Richardson Road. The first year, they gave me a grant for Mira Lake Road. Last year, they did not give me a grant. Um, I keep trying until maybe I get a yes. So, um, but it's... <laughs> It's not like a bridge replacement, which is okay. another a slightly different program. My my hope is is that there's some restart America money or or something to you know get the econo or economy moving uh, once things open back up, and I'm hoping that there'll be a number of infrastructure grant projects that could potentially. Uh, come down the road and maybe be used for things like this. I think that would be great. Yeah, that's speculation. I mean, I, sure. I don't know that, but I mean, in any time when the economy um, has a has a real issue, what happens from the federal government? They, you know, they put out you know grants for infrastructure type projects to to try to boost jobs and get people working again. We're keeping a close eye on what opportunities are out there um, and seeing where we can fit into some of those. Um, again, I don't know about this project yet. How much money do we have saved for this project so far? I didn't think to look before the meeting. Um, Diane, I don't think we have anything saved for this. We project. don't have anything because last year we were going to do the project and we ended up having to buy the excavator in a trailer. That's right. Yeah. So we spent it on that. They had an accident and we bought new equipment. Every year we've been trying to put aside, the 75,000 was an attempt to start putting aside some money so we could pay cash for equipment. And so far we have not been successful because we've raided the piggy bank every year. So you don't have um, capital reserve funds that are specifically targeted for specific things? Like we do, but for this project, we have, I think we have a very small amount in a highway um, reserve project. I don't think it's any more than four or $5,000. You're right. Diane knows better, but, um, yeah. but we don't very really. Small. Yeah. Yeah. That, may, that may be one thing in the future we want to explore just from uh, causing harm, harm to ourselves sometimes. <laughs> and it, it's all, it's all, you know, in good, good reasoning, but um, that this is just very common across multiple towns, right? That um, yeah. something always comes up, unfortunately, and we end up using money, and then we don't have any for for the intended use. Um, yeah. I, think, I, I think we've been trying to do this for like three years now, and one thing or another has happened. So I guess um, I'm not, I'm, you know, you might not be ready to act tonight, and certainly you have a little bit of time to ponder this, um, and we certainly could, I, I, to be honest, I am trying to stay away from um, hitting um, salaries. I wanted to... That's a very last 
prop. I also want to share that I, Joe Staub's going to be getting with me. Just uh, so he's going to send me the, their new proposed budget this week, and next Thursday, one week from this Thursday, there's a board of directors meeting. Um, and so he's looking at about a 10%. So that's another 30, roughly what, $30,000 from the fire department. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to really check because that's voted separately. We're obligated, yeah. you know, so it might have to be, we might have to borrow from our undesignated for if you want an immediate yeah, um, result later. Okay. Well, you'll figure out how we need to navigate that, right? It's not impossible. It's not impossible, no. Dana, so one, of the, one of the things that I'd like to understand a little bit better, um, the delay of filling um, the, the highway position till November 1st, I'd just like to understand, and, and maybe you haven't had time for this yet, but you know, what's, what's the plan? What does that mean? Because it is the, the foreman position, right? Or the superintendent position, whatever. Um, Berlin calls the position. Um, how would how would you how would you go about running that team, and what what would it look like over the summer, and what types of things wouldn't we be able to do? I guess being being new to the board and being new to Berlin, I I always like to understand as much as possible before making these types of decisions. Sure, I think that obviously that is not a very um, appetizing. Um, Thing to do. I think that if we were to do it, um, and it has happened, I am told, in the past, I would need someone appointed as the foreman um, from the highway team and work with them closely to get their schedule. Um, I'm thinking that three people, um, it would be easier working with three people in the summer months, in the fall months, than the winter months. Um, also, maybe the another advantage is if you have a foreman uh, learning, um, I, I think our staff is very good at knowing what their jobs are, but if you have them learning a little bit more, I'd have to take a more active part in the um, administrative items, such as the payroll, et cetera. Um, but do you think that in that interim time, you'd have any ability to just be able to oversee and make, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, nobody wants to be micromanaged and those guys are probably as efficient at their job. Would it be a lot for you to be, to know where everything was sitting and what needed to get done on a weekly basis and make sure it got done? Or would that be just a daunting task? I'm, I don't even well, know. Well, I think that I would certainly have to put, to more time to what now, which is fine. I can do that. I need much more communication with the highway department. Right now, Tim and I communicate often. Um, and But as far as directing the day-to-day -day activity and making sure that day-to-day -day issues get done, and I'm not a micromanager. I like to, you know, trust that people do things, And but I would know if they're not, um, obviously. So, um, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but yes, yeah. Yeah, I think you did. I was just curious how you would how you would handle it or if you even could. And I think that your management style from what I've seen is something that would probably be able to accommodate that once you knew what the weekly or daily tasks would typically be. Yeah. I mean, I like to work as a team. And, uh, and I think that we have a staff that could work with me. So um, I think the other I offer that to you. Yeah, I think the other thing for us to consider is over the over the next couple of months, um, social social distancing isn't going away. So maybe you know, especially after the the town highway crew did have reservations about continuing to work through this crisis, uh, maybe it's not a bad idea to cut down for for this one summer to to see you know and have a smaller have our smaller mm -hmm. group. Um, um, ma maintain the roads for the summer and see see how we do. 
it's a possibility. Um, and again, you know, to get a highway superintendent, it will, I would suspect it would take a while for someone to um, get their routine down and, and get familiar with the community, et cetera. Well, all that's fine and dandy, but all, you, all it takes is one really good storm and you're down, man. I'm sorry, Brad, what'd you say? I said, that's fine and dandy, not, not in Tim's position, but all it takes is one good storm of being down, man, trying to fix a road. You're absolutely right. So I can't see the real advantage of not fulfilling that position. I mean, Tim's willing to help train by taking them around. If you don't take that opportunity, then you're going to be out on that experience. Um, if anything, I'd rather see if you get to work a couple more months. We could look elsewhere, sure. Brad, Brad you were cutting out a little bit there, so I couldn't hear the last sentence or two that you had said. Um, well, the thing of it is, is that if uh, I was wondering if it'd be worth approaching Tim to see if he would just stay on for another couple of months to get us through the summer. Trouble, of course, is you don't want to keep extending it out two months at a time. But uh, have you felt the RFP or the um, the uh, job applications yet, Dana? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, the job application period closed. I have, um, I believe I have seven applicants, um, which I will be talking to you about, but I wanted to get how are we going to do that first. Well, um, and as a side note, how we're going to um, do the interviews and, and how much the board wants to be involved, et cetera. Okay. Um, well, is there any more on the, on the uh, budget adjustment? Brad, I couldn't uh, hear the last thing you said. Is there, is there any more on the budget adjustment? I, I think we're on the right track. I think we should probably, um, yeah, you know, I'll review it, review the budget that passed and and see if there's any other areas that we'd like the uh, town administrator to look. Well, I'm just curious, has the state had, has the state started doing anything with uh, salary reductions or budget cuts? Um, no, yes and no. Um, no from a budget reduction salary cuts, but there has been a hiring freeze. So no new positions created unless if they're approved by the Secretary of Administration that are directly related to the COVID-19 response. Um, and all unnecessary expenditures are asked to be put on hold for now. That's the, that's the guidance that's that's come out so far. But um, it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a complicated, uh, big, uh, big environment, especially with all the federal money coming in and everyone trying to get their arms around what the, what the true you know, target is and what the projection is long-term. So, um, you know, I, I expect that more guidance will be coming out to agencies and departments um, in the coming months as the legislature, you know, uh, continues to try to get their arms around the issues. Well, um, like I said, I mean, as far as the road foreman's position, I'm not really in favor of not hiring someone because like I said, it just takes one good storm and you're really screwed. The other problem is, is that you have Tim willing to uh, kind of impart his uh, strategies to the guy and keep the uh, keep the uh, workflow going. 
would it make sense to kind of go through the, the the hiring process with the people that submitted applications and see uh, where their wages might actually fall? I mean, is it possible that there's people in there that obviously wouldn't be hired on at the same prices we're currently paying? Does that make any sense? It, it makes sense. Um, I believe that what you are offering for a salary you are not going to be able to get someone who is going to do the job you want for terribly lot less than what we have to, to okay. offer. Um, well, the trouble is it's a, it's a, a specific uh, skill set to do that. Right. Was there a brand that did all We might know more. Um, after the may is it may 15th when taxes are due diane yes okay after after that we'll see where how we're impacted then um mm -hmm. in the meantime uh, i'll be glad to take a look at other things um if you decide that we really should not delay the hiring of the um superintendent Um, so, Mr. Moore, you mentioned um, your budget adjustments, uh, suggestions. Yeah, the suggestions. I don't know if it's me, but I'm not hearing you awfully well, Brad. Yeah. Hey, you're coming through broken up too. Am I? Okay. It must be my Berlin uh, internet. Yeah, that or it's the Wi Fi out on drugs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, any more on the uh, budget adjustments? Uh, not from me, no. Any other discussion? Bill, I see you're on here. Is there anything you want to speak to? Uh, no, I, like I said, we're trying to do our part to help out. And um, I, I would like to talk about the Brown Pond issue we've we've been out there we've been quite a presence i think john you, you've seen us out there i hope you've seen us out there we've been out there quite a bit um you know we're encountering some hostilities from residents local residents but again my feeling is that this is good for people's mental health to be able to get out and take a walk on a nice sunny day and we are patrolling the area and making sure that emergency vehicles and other vehicular traffic can pass through there and if not we're addressing it but my feeling and i hope the board supports me on this is that i would like to take kind of a hands-off approach to this particularly now because quite honestly i mean it is it is very important for people to be able to have an outlet and that pond area is beautiful it's a very popular place to go for a walk um, and I'd like to continue business as we're doing it currently. I certainly support you in that. I'm not. I'm not aware of any um, residential hostility, but um, you know that there's definitely been um, an uptick in the number of walkers. And you you lock people at home for seven weeks, and that's bound to bound to get people outside just wanting fresh air. So. Is there, we, we see people go by. I don't think that they're doing anything wrong. The people to, that are walking together, you can usually tell that they're families. Uh, the people that aren't, um, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Or, but, you know, we're all dealing with it because you can see them on each side of the road, right? They're trying to keep their distance. And everyone I've seen, including, you know, the, the residents on the road understand. And I, I, think, I think everything's going fine. I've certainly seen you guys... Uh, step up your presence on the road and it's appreciated. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I had, general, or ladies and gentlemen, so I'll, I'll leave you, thank you. If I can figure out how to leave you, I'll leave you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, if there's nothing else on the budget adjustment suggestions, uh, town apologize. The, um, you suggested at the last meeting um, that I include the, the legal trails, which I have. And also it was a good suggestion to uh, coordinate the um, 
policy to include the zoning. Um, I was a little um, surprised that there's very little said about um, how a road, basically it just kind of goes by the road standards, which uh, was something that the board voted on many years ago to the state standards, which we have. Um, and so I have kind of alluded to that in there. And the last thing, um, I think it was Justin that mentioned about whether it made financial sense. I think that's what you were saying. Um, and my problem with that was that none of the roads make financial sense, um, quite frankly. Um, and, and, uh, and the amount, you know, depending on unless it's a, a, a large commercial property, um, other than that residential, it, it, it really doesn't impact us that much. So again, that doesn't need to be approved tonight or I'm willing to have your suggestions. I guess I'm, I need help. Well, Dana, I was thinking that, um, you know, the, uh, like, well, the Herring Farm Road, I mean, if, if he would expect the town to take it over at some point, and he really thought through how much of the work it takes to put it in a road base to hold the um, that kind of track of well, heavy truck traffic, fire, fire engines, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I I think that I wrote myself a note to talk to the fire department. James said he had um, sent them things, but I'm going to be talking to the fire department as well. Um, and again, I'm thinking that the town really just wants to maintain those standards that you um, approved that the state suggested. And if it needed to be upgraded, it would be incumbent upon the owner of the road um, to do so. And I know that I know that they definitely um, the the fire the fire departments definitely have the standards they they want to see and that ingress and egress. So I'm I'm surprised. I'll talk to. I mean, I that when James got on, I was shocked that he didn't hear anything from the Berlin Fire Department even on that. Mm -hmm. I would have totally anticipated them having some sort of response or input. Um, because typically they, they want to have a, especially with a new road or another residence, they want to have a plan of action on how they can approach it. They want to know how they can get their truck in there should something happen. I mean, there's an obligation there. Yeah, I agree. I thought, I think a, a just conversation, I'd like to have a conversation with the uh, fire chief, um, Keith. Well, and I can bring it up. Too. I mean, I'm going to be that meeting next a week from this Thursday too, and I'm, I can talk to Joe and Keith about it as well. Okay, okay. great. I, I'll let you do it then, so I won't, you know. Have you figured a way to take and tie in the uh, road policy with zoning? With zoning? Yes. Other than other than saying that the road, how what how did I put it here? Um, I would think that you could uh, determine if the town with town standards as well as consistent with the town's zoning code. Um, the zoning code as related to roads. I have too many pieces of paper in front of me, I think. Um, talked about roads being developed in a subdivision, um, a subdivision or um, PUD, whatever that is, and I should have, I should know what that is, but the um, planned unit development. Thank you. Will require construction of a new extended or upgraded road, and so it's. Um, I think that the code probably should have said, uh, in with town standards as adopted by the board, um, and we have adopted standards. I think again, I think we're kind of almost veering into the private road piece too, though, because there's a difference. Like most of the zoning rat has been a 
around a private road development that the town will then take over, not a, a public road that we already own. Um, so, it, it, so I, there's a couple of pieces there. I just, I mean, there are a couple of key key roads. Well, I mean, well, I guess I guess some of them are already class three roads where there's potential for future development right in the Four Corners general area. Uh, but I would think that you could just tie it in more or less with the widths. I mean, the, the biggest thing is, you know, the line of sight, you know, you look at that, you look at the roadbed, you look at all of that. But to me, when, I, when I'm thinking about it, it's, it's really just, it's the safety piece of getting in and out and the widths that are associated with our current zoning. Um, <laughs> more so, more than more than the state specs, and I mean, because the the state specs for a class three road are irrelevant with a road that we're bringing from class four to class three. Um, it, it's irrelevant to that because it's grandfathered. Am I wrong, Dana, or am I right? Rather, whatever. Based on what we had looked at about a year ago, when you look at the where is it? I don't know if it's even in here. Um, the the municipalities, if it's a class, if it's currently a class four road, municipalities, according to one of the titles in the Vermont statutes, uh, somewhere in BSA 19, I believe, um, if it's currently a class four road, they're grandfathered in and can automatically, like, they can be upgraded to a class three, even in their current form. So if it's a nine foot wide class four road and we're doing any sort of maintenance to it or anything like that, there's no reason we wouldn't have it be a class three for starters because that all we're doing is costing ourselves revenue we would generate from the state. But, and that's why, because of that, I know that, I know we can, we can, you can upgrade it. So I think that's what I guess makes it a little bit different with the zoning uh, because we're already going to have the, we're already going to have the typically the width there unless it's been turned over to a trail. Uh, so there really is a lot to this policy. Uh, I would like to see the policy. I mean, I think we can make it pretty simple um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be tied to revenue, but I think it could be tied to dwelling units, which would be the ingress and egress piece for the fire departments and essential services. And then, um, you know, when I even when I when I think about the Black Road piece, I mean the town right now where it's costing us revenue to even though it's only a trial and I get why we did it and I understand everything about it and the dynamic of it all, uh, but it is costing the town money when it could be a Class Three road for it not to be a Class Three road if we're going to even consider maintaining something. So that's the whole reason I want the policy is so that it's clear, concise, and we and here's why we upgraded it because we. You know, I thought maybe there would be a rational thought process behind, well, if we have three dwelling units and they average $200,000 a piece, like you mentioned, uh, but, you know, it sounds like it's probably just more of a density factor that we want to consider is, you know, the more, the, the further you go down, a, say, a class four road, if you go down it a half a mile and there's 15 houses on it, theoretically, there, there's a lot more traffic. So there's going to be a lot more congestion issues and a lot more ingress and egress issues. So if we had a policy that was tied to, you know, dwelling units or, you know, units in a PUD uh, per, per, uh, per mile or, or some sort of formula, I mean, I think that would make sense. I think we can overthink it a little bit. And I think that would be the easiest way to make sure that our residents were safe, that the land was developable to the point where uh, somebody may look at it and go, you know what, that land's a little more valuable because I know Berlin has this policy in place. So if I bought this and I was able to get it zoned and approved and make it through this process, it would become a class three road. It's already a class four road. Um, so that's that's the thing. The, does that, you understand what I'm saying there? I, I understand what you're saying, I guess. Uh, and my my whole thing with this, and I agree with you, is to make it consistent so right. that we have something to look at and to stick with it. And we've yep. got, you know, yes, you can you can make the class four road into a class three road. Um, 
and and not stand by your rules. And I'm that's what I think we need to avoid. Um, that right, you know, if we're so putting if we, it in, you, you know, there's got to be a standard. Right now, the standard that we have is the state standard. If we and but we certainly could put. Um, you know, from a development standpoint, if there's going to be homes developed, we certainly could put number of dwelling units. And I think this would be a great conversation with the fire department because we should be consistent with what they uh, suggest. Right. Um, that's that's my point. I mean, just and that'll help you. I mean, I think this whole thing's maybe an exercise in education for the entire board on how we probably want to plan moving forward as well. I mean. Yeah, I'll just Why don't I work this. with uh, the fire department and rework that a little bit? Yeah, and they, they probably have a lot of the information that we need when it comes to, um, I mean, I'm sure they know that it, uh, you know, the ingress and egress pieces and the factors that, you know, the length of the roads with the number of units on it and how that impacts it. I mean, they, they're going to have that more at their disposal than we are, so we should yeah. try to utilize yeah. that. Yeah, I think there's something in our in here that talks about that. But and I would think that we could we could keep it. I mean, you know, when I look at the 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 width of the driveways, you know, the width piece. I think a lot of the state spec stuff is more what's under the road, right? It's more you know core sample. You're, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think the dimensional aspect of the the state specs we could probably look at so the dimensional piece of the width um, and the drainage maybe on the side would be would be the big factors that be that that's, would that's a great point and and the right away what we'd need for a right away exactly and do we already have it you know if we already have it which I think if it's still a class four road we must already have a right of way that will meet the class three standards wouldn't we um, yes. Yeah. So I think. Go ahead, Brian. If you, could, uh, if you could take a look at the, uh, I never thought of that, but you do have a problem now with the uh, Lake Champlain watershed and the runoff problem. Yeah. Yeah. And so it would need to, especially if it's a hydrologically connected segment. Yeah. So um, I think that is pretty much your road policy is still a work in progress. Yeah, and I appreciate the advice. Um, uh, I'll, uh, my next stop will be the fire department. Okay, anything else on this? Not from me. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, um, approval start board minute. Make a motion to approve the select board minutes of April 20th. Second. Any further discussion? I'm just wondering who puts the minutes together? Uh, the minutes are done by Bethany Town. Um, she does that from the um, this recording. And then I review them um, to see if there's anything that I think should be added or or corrected. I, you broke up right at the beginning there for a second, Data. Who did you say it was? It's um, we hire Bethany Town has does them and she does them from this recording. Uh, they're um, excellent. I think I think they you know they're they're very thorough. Um, I think uh, she she does an excellent job too. Certainly a lot better than I probably can do. For me, yeah. <laughs> we have a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, town administrator's report, Dana. I don't have too much for you tonight. I'm just. Um, I did include some minutes from the planning commission for you to review, as well as draft minutes from the public works uh, board. And I've got to remind these committees to um, let you know when their meetings are so that you had availability as your as a liaison to 
either attend or um, comment, you could. Um, other than that, I guess I would like to talk about, and we still don't know about a date of reopening the building. Um, but I think it's good for us to decide what we're going to do when we reopen the building. Um, it's worked fairly well with four of us because we don't go in each other's offices and we don't, other than shouting at each other from the hallway um, or, or, <laughs> or else we call each other. Tom and I talk a lot on the telephone. Um, but I think that we need to come up with, with a plan. And I think we certainly can uh, with using the guidelines that are permitted to us. One issue that the clerk mentioned to me today is she is uncomfortable opening um, if she doesn't have um, a plexiglass guard. In other words, if you've gone into Maple Woods, they have a, they have a plexiglass barrier, I guess a sneeze guard or, or something like that. Diane has one in her office, um, which has really worked out quite well. Rosemary had said she would like one as well, and Corinne. Um, so I guess, and I'm, and I'm trying to be very careful with what money I spend, but I just think I should go ahead and get that done. But, but to make you aware, the town did not pay for mine. Mine was donated by Wayne Lamberton. So right. Just to make you aware, I didn't buy anything. So, sure, Diane. I don't, I don't have a problem with the the plexiglass, but I, I think you know, as a as a as a rule for now, um, both both or everyone in the office should have a mask available. Um, we do. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. that any anyone that comes in is required to have a mask as well. I think yes. yeah. I think right. you know that's that's just standard operating procedure for now. Um, and I, I don't have a problem with the plexiglass guard if that makes her feel more comfortable, but you know, I, I think it's important that she she wears her mask when when there's other people in there and that they do the same. Right. Um, and of course, the other part of that is that she has not opened the office yet, and we are having some requests. Yeah, yeah. Dave, I didn't realize that. It was my understanding that it was open by appointment. Um, the, uh, it is not. Okay. I, I think we certainly need to have the place open. I understand the issues that Wayne brought up. Uh, I talked to one of my friends that's a realtor, uh, and I said, hey, let me ask you a question. If you were had a closing scheduled on a house in the in a town, and uh, he goes, well, we haven't had any problems. I said, have you closed on any houses or sold any in Berlin? And he usually has a couple of listings. And he, he goes, no. I go, well, if you couldn't do any title work, uh, what would that? He's like, oh, that wouldn't be good. So um, I, think, I think right now, um, I had a conversation with Wayne earlier today on the phone for quite a while. Um, and I think he brought up some fairly decent points in the process. Um, with all the stimulus money that's going around currently, a lot of people's incomes as of today have remained fairly level. Um, I know that it's not, it's not perfect. It's not a great scenario, but these businesses are drastically impacted. And, and sometimes if they don't have the access to maybe a line of credit or um, they can't make an, a purchase, or I mean, the, financially, we're really impacting them by not being open. Um, and, and a lot of those transactions, I mean, all of those transactions, a line of credit, a refi, uh, a new purchase, a sale, those are all dependent on our, um, on our, them, them being able to do the title work. And mm. based on what I saw that I forwarded to the, to, I think I, that maybe I just forwarded it to you, Dana, and I apologize if that's all I did, but what my attorney had sent me um, it looks like that was in one of uh, Phil Scott's orders as essential services. 
it was April 17th. We should. Yeah. I mean, they're able to be completely open and, and running. And I, I get that. I think maybe they should be on a limited basis and they, sh you know, someone needs to do title work. You know, I don't know. You can do Calendly. I don't know if you know any of those, but I'd be happy to help you with that where people can schedule, um, schedule having someone come in there. I mean, th there shouldn't be more than one person, obviously doing title work at a time. And that I think the governor's, um, um, the addendum that he wrote on that specified, uh, the number of people that could be in the office and some of the procedures um, to follow uh, while yeah. someone was there. And yes, it would be by appointment. Um, so, so two things. Uh, one, uh, um, uh, Flo has been writing um, off to the side and she'd like to see the, the office open to paraphrase. Um, uh, what, what she has over there so you guys can take a look but also I think that office needs to open uh, immediately and um, you know just for the reasons that Justin mentioned alone I, I did not know that they were they hadn't been open at this point I think it's I think we need to open it um, we, and we can work on the safeguards the immediate safeguards should be the masks and uh, gloves as she she feels comfortable but the plexiglass we should try to get on right away for her as well but okay we should all right i'll have a conversation with rosemary uh tomorrow about it um i you know rosemary does not work for me and which is why i was um wanted to chat with you okay yeah so my my thing would be do we have a safe do we have a place i mean because if if we get some sort of pushback or whatever someone's not necessarily comfortable with it. Um, do you, in your mind, have any sort of idea on how we could keep some distancing? Uh, any like recommended procedures based on how you know that office operates? Would it be uh, that, you know, worst case scenario, she goes and finds the records and brings them to a, a location in there somewhere? Or, I mean, how would we do that? How? I mean, obviously. Well, I mean, I think we I, I'm not a, I'm not an expert on how you do a title <laughs> search, of course. But um, I'm, Rosemary has been very helpful with people as far as um, emailing uh, documents and and that L type lister of, cards, lister, lister cards, cards and, and yeah. things like that. Um, and I think that you could you could uh, maintain social distance. Um, I know she was concerned about someone touching the documents. Um, obviously, the uh, right. the recordings um, of deeds, etc. You, I mean, you have to, you have to. There's a case for putting everything online, but um, <laughs> it's. Uh, I, I don't know what else you can do. I mean, you know, people have got to do this. They've got to research things. And, yeah. 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 I mean, we can ask that they wear gloves. I mean, that's not the end of the world. I mean, I think everyone has a different feeling on, um, you know, whether, you know, someone should touch paper or not touch paper, touch boxes, not touch boxes. But again, um, we... <laughs> I mean, well, we certainly could supply gloves. To, to yeah. what's... We, we do have gloves to supply. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. We do. My personal I mean, thought is that if we supply gloves and we have masks there for everybody yeah, we do, we do have masks. and we require people wear the masks, um, we need to get this town open. We need, it needs to be running. People, people need to be able to make transactions. And we have a lot of businesses in this town that those are the ones that are really going to hurt if they have a problem paying their taxes, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and I agree. I mean, obviously... We, Diane and I have both had people that have had to have things notarized yeah. and with mass and things they've we've I mean, been able to do that. We've found a way. And I yeah. even have people have paid me cash. I find a way to make you know make that work. I have found like today somebody wanted a receipt. I said, wait outside, I'll get you one. And you know, when everybody was happy. Yeah, I think. I, I, I mean, I, I think we should be open for records tomorrow if we can be. And, I, and if you, do, if you get, 
if you, my, my thought behind it is if you get pushback or you find yourself in a situation where you don't, you know, you, you can't relay that or, or whatever for the board. I mean, I'm fine with, I'm available all week and especially with zoom, we can have a special select board meeting or whatever we need to do to, to, to figure this out. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I just didn't want to overstep my bounds. Rosemary and I have a very good relationship and I'm sure we can work that out. Thank you. Um, that's all I had, Brad, on that. Uh, Dana, yeah. how about the warrants? We need to get the warrants approved. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. We're having a um, several items that Diane has sent you to be signed electronically that is stuck somewhere. Um, one item I'm looking for especially is the approval of the liquor license you approved at your last meeting. I think we have a few warrants that have not come back. And so um, I'm talking about tonight's warrants. Oh, oh, you mean to vote, Diane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I forgot to put that on this. Okay. <laughs> I can't handle this. I can't handle too much at once. Um, so I guess we need to do that, Brad. You're muted, Brad, so I can't hear you. Brad, can you unmute yourself? Let me, let me see if I can help for a minute. Thank you. Help me. Yeah. All right. I move to approval of warrant report number 20 G20 in the amount of, I'm going to get the amount here wrong. Could you, do you want you, me to read it? it would, would you, that would be helpful. I will. For, I've got it right here. Okay. You put your glasses okay. on. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I need my glasses. Thank you, okay. Diane. Yep. General Fund Accounts Payable Warrant 20G20 with checks 20176 to 20197 in the amount of 42722207 Payroll Warrant 2022 for payroll from April 20, 12th, 2020 to April 25th, 2020, paid on April 29th, 2020 in the amount of 41248 So moved. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Second. Thanks. Any other discussion? Those in favor? I. I. Motion carried. Round handle, Justin. Yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure everyone. Did you see that uh, text I forwarded? about some of the stuff in the office. I just wanted to make sure everybody saw that. And if anything uh, popped up, you, did you read your email that I sent out today, Brad? Uh, it was in reference to a text I got from Corinne. Um, it was just some, some, some suggestions and recommendations. Um, One of the okay. suggestions, if I might barge in, Justin, thanks. Thank you. Um, was, and I spoke with Rosemary about this, um, it, when you come into the town office in the vestibule at the front door, there, in back of the bulletin board, there's a window that goes into the, um, where Corinne's office is. And they had suggested perhaps moving the bulletin board and using that window so people would not have to come in to the office. Um, an issue we have with that, I've got to somehow figure out how people can get to Diane. Um, and I really can't have Diane running back and forth to the window. Um, the other issue that Corinne is concerned about, as you know, is the floor in, in the office that has broken tiles. 
Um, she is concerned about the asbestos that I had verified and had the state look at it, and they were not concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, um, there is the wall issue, um, which is going to be quite expensive. And in light of where we are, um, I was going to just see if I could have that window repaired. And um, I hate to keep putting things off and off, but I'm not sure what else, other choices we have. So I think yeah, that's what I, Justin was saying. Yeah, yeah more or less. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody saw that, saw the concerns. Uh, obviously, we can't do anything with it. Uh, but I, right now, um, but I wanted to make sure everybody saw that and just had an opportunity to look at it. Cause there was some of the points like we brought up, we already knew. Um, I don't think the wall was on there. Um, I maybe think not. That, yeah. I think that wall is something we definitely do. Maybe not expanding at this point, like we had talked about, but I yeah. think we definitely yeah. need to look at, uh, I mean, it's, it's leaning in a little bit, whether it's structural or not. We different. do have, I mean, I think we need to get a less, costly repair because we do have insurance money on that on the have line. we received so, that yet or no they're waiting for us to move um, um so i i think we i guess that. i'd also like to say i think it's a good idea for corinne and rosemary to to be able to petition off their office at some point and I, i've i've always thought that about that office way before covid for security Type right. standpoint, it's just not set up conducive to that. Um, I mean, in all reality, can... in all reality, you could probably save a lot of this burden and just say, if somebody wants to, doesn't need a receipt, wants to drop off a tax payment, or they want to move stuff, couldn't we just do it right through the door somehow? Do something with well, they do. Door? Diane does have customers yeah. come to her door. I have uh, about a third of them. We can. Door. I mean, we could maybe change that into a window. I think we'd have to do something about getting people out of the weather. Um, well, I'm just talking sort. the front door at the town clerk's office. I mean, you could almost change that door and do a transaction right through there. I mean, they must make a door where you can slide stuff in and through. Well, or even do like a Dutch door, I suppose. Um, but, be but again, like a, like a metal people many, do tend people to like that to I've give seen. me the check. A yeah. lot of people like to hand it to me. They see my face. They see I got it. Even if they don't want a receipt, they like that. Um, and a lot of people, if we can make signage on the outside or whatever to come to my office around the building. Right. So, I mean, that. the signage would be minimal for them to go over to that door, yeah. which would avoid them. And oh, then if they yeah. have other things, it would be pretty easy for them to walk through the double doors that are there now and leave the town clerk's office door closed and communicate i mean there's that's cheaper than breaking out windows and it would definitely reduce yeah. people or accommodate it you know i mean and then we'll just build an underground tunnel right into the vault no just <laughs> <laughs> hey i heard that i like it <laughs> oh so no i mean we're not going to be able to avoid the vault but a lot of other things we can definitely really easily restrict and I think we need to think of those things. I think it's, uh, you know, with with the fact that we have to just make it work. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep, I agree. So that's all uh, for the round table. Uh, Sorry. Uh, I think Brad just went on mute. Yeah. Uh, it looked like you just went on mute. You were a little broken up, so I couldn't hear you. And then I saw your mute light come on. Do you have anything for roundtable? You have anything for roundtable, John? I have nothing. Uh, Flo? Poor Flo can't say anything, but she has been, she doesn't have anything. Yeah. I do not have anything around. Here. 
<laughs> uh, okay. I feel like I'm dealing with Marcel Marceau uh, here. Uh, uh, executive session? Uh, no, thank you. I, I didn't. I didn't hear my name called for the roundtable. Hey, okay. Have... I, I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't have a lot. I just wanted to thank Dana and uh, the rest of the team for. Uh, putting together, you know, a proposed um, uh, revised budget, you know, that's, it's not an easy thing to go through. And it's certainly uncomfortable for everyone doing it. But um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to do that and to, to give us something to consider. You know, none of us are in a, we're in a un, unfamiliar territory here with all that's going on. And how long it will last and whether or not it'll come back and all kinds of things. So um, I appreciate it. I just wanted to say that. So thank you. Thank you, John. We appreciate you saying that. And um, I have a great team. Brad, I can't hear you. You're on A motion to enter into executive session? No, I have none. Okay, uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Flo says aye as well. <laughs> This is a tough one.